Bill Clinton was an extraordinarily able commander-in-chief. By the way, at the same time we attacked Saddam Hussein, we finished off the remnants of his weapons of mass destruction program in December of 1998. We did strike at Osama bin Laden and probably Clinton, as he said on television the other night, he probably tried a half dozen times to take out Osama bin Laden. He failed to do that. But he tried and he warned George Bush when he came to office what the real threat to America was. It wasn't China. It wasn't North Korean missiles. We didn't need to make the top priority a theater missile and national missile defense program. What we needed to do, and Clinton and his team told this to the incoming administration, we needed to focus on the threat from Osama bin Laden. The warning was given and it was ignored by George W. Bush. He was asleep at the switch. He didn't call meetings. He didn't produce a national strategy. He didn't alert the Allies. He didn't do a thing extraordinary. You know, in the United States Navy, when you're the commander of an aircraft carrier and you're docking in San Francisco, and it's got some pretty strong currents and you don't do anything extraordinary, you just sort of let the aircraft carrier drift and it runs aground, they don't even do an investigation. They don't care if you're on the bridge, asleep in your stateroom or on leave in Kansas. You're fired. You're derelict in duty. Our president didn't do enough before 9-11. Ladies and gentlemen, he was derelict in his duties as Commander-in-Chief. <laughs> they used 9-11 as a pretext to embark on this cockamamie notion of invading a bunch of countries in the Middle East to change their governments. They used the weapon to mass destruction as an excuse. Let me tell you, in 1991, when I was a one-star general at the National Training Center, I had to go back to Washington on a visit. And I paid a courtesy call on Secretary or on uh, Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Colin Powell, and then went upstairs and paid a courtesy call on Under Secretary of Defense Paul Wolfowitz. 1991. I said, Mr. Secretary, congratulations on the Gulf War. He said, well, thanks, but not really. He said, because we let Saddam Hussein get away. He, I didn't say anything. I wasn't in the Gulf War. I was in Fort Irwin, California at the, as a commanding general of the National Training Center. <clears throat> Wolfowitz said, he said, you know, he said, some people think that Saddam's going to be overthrown. He said, I know, he said, our president thinks that. He said, but I don't think so. He says, in fact, we failed. He said, but we've got a window. We learned that the Soviets won't use force against us when we use force. We can now use our military, he said. And we've got a window, an opportunity of five, ten years, maybe more. Go into the Middle East in force and clean out these old Soviet client states, these Soviet surrogate regimes like Iraq and Syria before the next great superpower comes along and bring the Middle East over to our side. <clears throat> I, I listened to him. I just said, sort of, oh, yes, sir, thank you and walked out. I gotta get a glass of water. Yeah, thanks. So I thought to myself, well, that's certainly a strategic nugget. Think of that. We're gonna embark on a campaign of cleaning up the military, in the, cleaning up the Middle East by invading countries. 
knocking off their governments, taking over. Goodness gracious. I, um, I walked out of the office in 1991, and it was like a time warp. That's what they did after 9-11. They put the plan in place. I was in the Joint Chiefs of Staff 10 days after 9-11, and a three-star general said to me, Sir, come into my office. I said, No, I'm, you're too busy. He said, Sir, come in. Close the door. He said, I have to tell you this. He said, We're going to invade Iraq. This is 10 days after 9-11. I said, why? Did they find some kind of linkage with Saddam Hussein? He said, no, sir. He said, I don't know why. He said, I guess they don't know what to do about terrorism. But they know that the army can, we can invade Iraq and take down his government. He said, I guess it's like the old saw, you know, if the only tool you got's a hammer, then every problem has to look like a nail. I came back about six weeks later. I didn't want to, you know, overstay my welcome in the Pentagon as a retired officer. And we were at that time bombing in Afghanistan. I went back to see the same general. I said, so uh, tell me, I said, are we still, um, still going to go into Iraq? He said, oh, sir, it's, uh, it's worse than that. He picked up a piece of paper on his desk. He said, uh, here's a... Here's a, this is a memo I just got from the third floor, meaning the Office of the Secretary of Defense, that outlines a five-year campaign strategy. We're going to go first into Iraq, then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and then Iran. Five years, seven countries. I said, is that classified? He said, oh, yes, sir. I said, then don't show it to me. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, they've lied to us. They haven't told us the truth. They didn't level with the American people before we went into Iraq. They haven't leveled with us about the difficulties that are there. They've been incompetent, didn't put enough troops in, didn't have the right mission didn't plan for what was going to happen afterwards. They've starved Afghanistan for resources where we could have achieved success and now we're in a failing mission there. They actually believe that the major obstacle to success in Iraq is the American people. Can you imagine? They think we're the obstacle to success if they can just keep us from knowing the truth, they think they can win. It's the most cockamamie, crazy, undemocratic notion I've ever heard in 38 years of following national security. They don't deserve to be in office and we are going to throw them out starting in this election in 2006. Ladies and gentlemen, we have to do this. This is more important than health care, education, a minimum wage, or energy independence. We've got to get these people out before they take America over the precipice. This threat briefing that the President gave on Islamo-Fascist Salafists uh, trying to create a caliphate, it was sophomoric. Every lieutenant in the Army, captain and sergeant first class could have given the same threat briefing. They could have given it in 1928, 38, 48, 58, 68, 78, these are old ideas. There's about 50,000 people out there aligned with Osama bin Laden. Not one government supports Osama bin Laden. It is not World War III. Unless we make it that way. 
unless we make it that way. And that's my greatest concern. That if we don't get our Democrats in office around America and in the Congress in Washington, this administration is going to take us to war with Iran and try to start a war with a billion people, people of the Islamic faith. There's no reason to do it, in my view. There's a solution to the problems we face. I'd say, let's talk to people we don't agree with. 